Hey guys, welcome to Fit Tip Tuesday. Today I'm going to answer a subscriber's question about how to lengthen the center back seam on a shirt or top pattern when it doesn't have a center back seam. So I've showed how to do a high round back adjustment where you actually slash and spread through the back of the pattern pivoting at the armhole to create a room along the center back seam. Doing it that way creates a curved seam up at the top which would help not only fit um, a high round back but it also conforms to the shape of a high round back. So it adds the length and it also adds some shaping. But if you want to add length to a pattern that doesn't have a center back seam, I have an alternative for you. It's not going to create the shape, but it will add length to the center back to allow the back of your shirt to come all the way up. This will prevent your shirt from pulling from the back because if the back is not long enough, what happens is it stresses out the shoulders and it pulls the shirt back. So let me show you what you're going to need for this tutorial. I've traced two, I've traced two mini um, top patterns to work with. I have some Sharpie markers to draw. I have scotch tape. I have my 18 inch clear grid ruler and my rotary cutter. Those are the things you'll need if you want to follow along. I'm also going to be using my green post-it notes to fill in the space after I slash and spread. You might be wondering why we need two copies of the pattern. Basically what we're going to be doing is slashing, spreading to add length and then reestablishing the shoulders and some of the neckline. So let's get started. So on one of these patterns, and actually on both of these patterns, I'm going to draw a guideline where I'd like to add the length. Okay, so typically you want to do that up near, you know, the high back, a few inches below the back neckline. So I'm just going to draw myself a line like this. And then I'm going to copy that line onto my second pattern. So my second pattern is going to be my guide to put everything back together. So basically I'm just going to trace that exact line on this piece. So this is going to be my master. I'm going to put this away for later. All right. The next step is we are going to slash along our line. We're not going to slash through the armholes though. We're going to make pivots there. We're also going to slash along the center back line through the neckline. So just to keep it clear, I'm going to put little pivots here and here. Okay, so I'm going to cut through the line but not to the armhole like that and I can create myself little pivots and then I'm going to slash through the neckline. So what that allows me to do is it allows me to pick up this top portion and you can see what's happening here as I pivot it up where am I adding the length? I'm adding the length at the center back and then we're going to zero by the time we're at the armhole. So this is what we want to do. Now if you need a guide for how much you need to raise your neckline, look at the back of one of the tops you're wearing and notice how much lower it is compared to where the back neckline should be. That's how much you're going to want to spread this pattern. All right, so I'm going to work with a half an inch here because this is a mini. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself one of my sticky notes and I'm just going to stick it down here like this and I'm going to spread each side a half an inch 
Now you can obviously measure that. So if I want it to be exact, I'm going to measure along my center back seam and just draw myself a line to where I want to spread. So that pink line is where I'm spreading to. Okay, and then I'm going to put another green sticky note over here so I can also spread the opposite side here. I'm going to make them meet at the center like that. All right, so I've got that all spread. Okay, so you can see all of this green is length we've added. But look at what's happening to the neckline. Our neckline and the slope of our shoulder, the neckline and our shoulder is now a little off. So what I want to do is show you how to reestablish the original neckline so it will still fit around your neck um, and agree with the front. All right, so I've tidied this up a little bit. Now I'm just going to take a piece of this extra scrap of paper I have here and I'm going to tape it to the top of the pattern. So what I want to do here is reestablish the neckline because it's now about a half an inch wider across the center back than it was before. And we really don't need that. Um, as part of the adjustment, the neckline needs to stay the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my, my master pattern here and I am going to line it up so that the original line that I drew, my slash line, which was down here, I'm gonna first I'm gonna line them up so you can see what's changed. So you can see what's changed is the back neckline and tips of the shoulders have been um, are higher now, and that's reflecting the amount that we added at the center back. So just so you can see it, I want to just I'm going to just trace it in with my pink Sharpie marker so you can see what was added. So I'm just going to go across the original position here with my pink just so you can see that we've what the original shape was. Okay, so here was my original shape. And this makes sense because the biggest change is at the center back and then the change gets to be nothing by the time we get over here to the shoulder because as we got to the armhole edge we pivoted and the change was less. So to fix the pattern and put it back the way it was, what I want to do here is I want to take, I want to match this horizontal line that was below the adjustment or where we slash the pattern, I'm going to slide it up so that it is now equal with the top of my spread line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace the original neckline like this. And I'm going to trace the the sides of the shoulders or the original armhole. I'm just going to trace those and I'm just going to mark the start of my shoulder seam. All right, so let's look and see what we have here. So you can see the neckline and around the shoulder is now higher. We've also re-established the original size of that back neckline. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just connect the armhole with the neckline to reestablish the shoulder. And you'll notice what's happened here is the amount that I had to move the neckline back in is the amount I had to trim off 
the armholes because we pivoted those out like this and we don't need them to be out like that but to get that length that's what happened to the pattern so by using the original shape we were able to re-establish the length the original length of the shoulder so it will still sew to the front okay so you can see that those match and if you we check the armhole you can see that the armhole is unaffected. Okay, so now we have a pattern with an additional one half inch at the center back. We have the original neckline shape, we have the original shoulders. The slope has changed a little bit, but we want it to be higher so we have room to fit around a high round back or if we need extra length at the center back, that's what we have here now. So just to finish up, I'm gonna tidy this up by cutting it out. And now the back pattern piece is ready to go. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on how to add length to the center back of your pattern if you don't have a center back seam. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below and I will help you. Finally, I wanna tell you about FabFit Friday this week, live at one o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I'm gonna be working on a summer must have project that has been ripped out of the pages of the May issue of Vogue magazine. We're going to be working on a patchwork quilted bucket hat and I'm really excited about this project because it's inspired me to update the floppy hat pattern that I did last summer. I'm going to include small, medium, and large sizing for the hat and I will post that in the Jaster Designs Fit Sew Embroider Facebook group. So if you haven't joined me there, you might want to consider clicking the link below and joining me because that's the place where I have little member perks. I do my behind the scenes. I do first looks and where I'm teaching. I try to give all that information to my Facebook group before I blast it everywhere else. Plus, if you have questions about something you're working on, I'm happy to help. And sometimes if a member posts a project they're working on with questions, other members join in and answer the question before I even see it. So it's a really helpful place if you're, you know, learning how to sew, learning how to fit, or if you are a seasoned sewer, it's just a great place to, you know, interact with other sewers and people who do fitting and um, you know consider joining us there and then you can get the free copy of the floppy hat and the bucket hat that I'll be working on on Friday so that's all I have for today thank you so much for watching and I hope I see you live Friday at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for FabFit Friday